Hugo Molly. <laughs> oh, Hugo. Poor Hugo. Look at the sky this morning. Oh, it's not showing up on the camera. Oh, Molly's like, thanks, Dad. Oh, Hugo. It's such a shame. He's like, I did well at Mull, Dad. You can just about see how pink the sky is there. It was red a minute ago, like bright red. Blue over there and pink there. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. Look at all the leaves on the cabin though. Oh, it's so autumn. I love autumn. I love it. And the dark nights are coming in. It's so nice and cosy. But it's too dark in the mornings now. I'm too nice and cosy and don't want to get up. Hello everyone. I hope you're all well. Today is Tuesday the 25th of October and poor Hugo's pacing back and forward now. It's so sad when Jack takes the other dogs running and he's left. He doesn't understand. Although he was running that Molly did do a bit of the canny cross that Molly did really well. Jack was saying there that the, he's not ready for running on the road, like the, the pavement. It's pause, I'm not ready for that yet. Shame. So sad. Anyway, I just wanted to do a wee quick vlog today. Well, this is me saying a wee quick vlog. There's never such a thing in this house, is there? Anyway, I wanted to do a vlog today because... Um, it'll probably be a wee sort of chatty one. I'm hoping to get these centrepieces for Granny Annie's pit lockery table finished today. I'm waiting for beads to come from Amazon because the little Rudolphs that I was talking about the other day, I want better beads for their eyes. That will all become apparent when they arrive today. I'm almost finished all the other little decorations. I'm just putting the final touches to them and then I'll let you see them. And um, the little jars for the centrepieces, I'll finish them when the beads come for the Rudolphs because I want to get my glue gun out just once and do it all at the same time. Jack managed to get all the wooden bits done for the centrepieces yesterday. I'll insert clips of how he did that. The good thing about living next to the beach is natural resources right on your doorstep. <laughs> so Jack's just went down to the beach and uh, got plenty of wood. For making the centre pieces, he's just gonna have to strip the back off it and then cut it down. <laughs> Other thing that we saw yesterday, oh, it was so gorgeous. We were sitting watching the telly and Hugo started going nuts. Well, Clyde went nuts, but Clyde always goes nuts. Birds passed by, Clyde goes nuts. But Hugo actually went up to the patio doors and he went up on his hind legs and he was standing against the door like that, barking. And he doesn't do that unless there's something that he sees or someone. You okay, big boy? He's pacing. Um, and I'm like, what on earth is it? Because we knew there was nobody there. So Jack went and there was a couple of deer right outside. They were over at the neighbor's fence and as we watched, they actually walked right inside our gate into our garden and started eating the, the grass. And they were just young. We could see they were young and we thought, oh, I wonder where mum is. So we moved to a different bit of the house to watch them. And then we realised that mum was in the garden next door. And they were there for ages, just happily eating away the grass. Jack was keeping the dogs quiet. It's okay, Hugo. Oh, poor boy. He'll be back soon. He just doesn't understand. Look at his face. Look at him. You're too big. You would hurt your paws running on the pavement. You would. Oh, it's not your fault. Um, so the dogs were quiet. And then Jack texted my mum and dad to say, come and see what's out here. So they were tiptoeing out. But the deer heard them. And they were watching. And they were eating grass and then watching and then they did get spooked but they were running about sort of panicking and jack was like they could easily jump the fence but they were too busy panicking so jack went out to try and give them the fright that they needed to jump the fence because they thought if they panic they're going to either hurt themselves or have a heart attack so jack gently went out and they realized they could jump the fence and they ran off so i'll put a wee bit of footage of them in here <laughs>
That was funny because when I saw them, the two deer, it reminded me of the joke. You probably all heard it, but I remember Abby just not getting it. So the joke was, the butcher, the other day the butcher tried to sell me eight legs of venison for £50. Is that too dear? <laughs> I'm not going to insult your intelligence by explaining that to you, but I just think of that uh, joke all the time when I see two deer together. Is that too dear? <laughs> anyway. Um, what else? Yeah, I had a few things that I wanted to tell you about while I'm here just now. Um, Brooke went back to school yesterday. That was a disaster. Of course it was a disaster. What do we expect? On Sunday she was wanting to go out and I said, right, if you want to go out, you need to make sure you've got everything together, ready to go. Everything for school because you're back to school on Monday. Yes, okay, I've got everything. I said, you need to make sure you've got your shoes, your uniform, your tie, all sorted, ready to go. Your your room has to be tidy. Okay, yeah, it's all done. Right, okay. So yesterday morning, last minute, she came through. The tie not tied. She's trying to tie it. I can I can only find one shoe. I said, I told you, you we're meant to have that done. She went, yeah, I saw one shoe and just assumed the other one would be there. Right, okay. I said, I'll come in and help you look for the other one. No, no. And I went, I take it your room isn't tidy like it should have been. Well, I thought it was. Yeah, right. This zip up my back is halfway down now. I should have checked. So that was a disaster. The trainers that she wanted to wear for PE were soaking. And I said to her, why are they soaking? I was wearing them yesterday and it was raining. Oh, God. So she had to wear... I said, right, you're going to have to wear your other trainers, the ones that you got in summer that are like the high tops. We're not supposed to wear them for PE. I went, I don't care. You're not wearing soaking wet trainers. Um, and then because she couldn't find her other shoe, she ended up having to wear the high top trainer all day. It's okay, Hugo. Can tie or tie. Ish. But she wouldn't let me do it for her. So she was running late off. It was just, it was a crazy morning. Anyway, she eventually got there. Uh, she was in a relatively happy mood considering all that had happened. And I went, right, you okay? We're going to school. Yes, because I'll be changing classes today. So for anybody who doesn't know this story, Brooke is in second year at secondary school. She's got Asperger autism. So, but she's in a mainstream secondary school. Since... They went back after the holidays, after summer. Uh, she's in second year. She's been getting bullied. She's wanted to move to a different class where there's no bullies and their friends are. It's been a whole ongoing saga. She's not wanted to go to school. She's been really anxious. She's not sleeping, blah, blah, blah. So before the holidays, this, this was her just going back after the October holidays. Before the holidays, the, we finally got told, yes, it's looking like she's going to get moved after the holidays, but the teacher in charge of it all was off with COVID. Surprise, surprise. So this was her quite happy going back, thinking she was getting moved. So I went, great, let me know what happens. So I hadn't heard from her. I messaged her later on in the afternoon. Have you changed class? No. Have you heard anything? No. So I said to her, right, go and see Mr. Thompson when she had health and well-being, which is basically when they get a chance to talk to their guidance teacher. I said, go and see him during health and well-being, find out what's happening. So she messaged me, he sent me to see Mr Monroe, who is like the head of her house. I went, right, okay. So just as she was coming in from school, Mr Monroe phoned me. And he said, um, so I was talking to Brooke earlier, uh-huh. Mrs. Kennedy, who is the one who was meant to be moving her, finally came back from having COVID on the Friday afternoon. Right, so she'd been off of COVID. She comes back on the afternoon that they're breaking up for the holidays. Okay. Um, and I explained to Brooke earlier, there's not a space in the class that she wants to move to. Right, that's a new development. This was not explained to us. Um, but we did explain that she could move to this class or that class, but Brooke doesn't want that. I said, no, Brooke doesn't want that because none of her friends are in those class. 
and there's other people that she clashes with in those classes. He just, he doesn't get autism. He obviously doesn't understand it at all. Um, because he also went on to say that when I explained it to Brooke, she, she seemed quite happy that she was just going to stay where she is until a space comes up in the other class. And she's happy with that. I'm like, she's not happy with that. Because, you know, she, she didn't say that she wasn't happy with that. I'm like, of course she didn't say she wasn't happy with that. First of all, you've not given her time to actually take it in. She's not processed what you're saying. Second of all, you're not, she's not going to sit there and argue with you. She can't, she doesn't like talking face to face, especially if it's an argument and especially if it's someone she doesn't know very well. And just at that, she came in and I had him on speaker so that she could hear what he was saying because I think it's important. She should be involved in the conversation. And she won't even argue with me face to face if it's something she's not happy with. She'll communicate by text. She doesn't like talking face to face. So she started texting me saying, no, I'm not happy with that. I don't want to stay where I am. I want to go where my friends are and where I'm not getting bullied. So basically, I said to him, look, you didn't give any indication before the holidays that there wasn't any spaces. No, I, I can only um, go by what I know of my 66 pupils that I've got in my house. So he started going on about, oh, yes, woe is me. I've got all these pupils. To I don't care. I really don't care. I've got one person that I'm worrying about and I want to know that she's happy where she is. Um, you know, we can't just move somebody out of that class for the sake of Brooke. And I said, no, I understand that. I said, but you shouldn't have raised her expectations by saying she was getting moved after the holidays, especially to someone who's autistic, because that's what she's been focusing on through the holidays. It's like they've just tried to make her feel better and then I will just tell her that. So um, I said, well, just let me assure you, she's not happy um, where she is. She's not happy to wait. I'll make it clear to her that she has to wait, but you need to be on Mrs. Kennedy's back to let her know that as soon as a space comes up, Brooke gets moved. Yes, uh -huh, because, you know, the transient nature, there, there will be a space coming up at one point. So... He's assured me that they're going to keep talking to Brooke to let her know they've not forgotten about it. And is so Mr. Thompson, Brooke's immediate guidance teacher, is going to talk to her on Wednesday and he's going to keep on Mrs. Kennedy's back. It's the best we can help hope for at the moment, but I think it's really cruel that they got her hopes up before the holidays and then they were totally dashed like that. So this morning she wasn't obviously wasn't happy going to school. She didn't want to go to school. So we're back there again. Such a saga. Why can't it just... Anyway, I'm not going to go on any more about it. I've probably been wittering on for about 10 minutes about that. So that is where we're at. Anyway, on to a happier subject. I was talking in my last vlog about how it's my birthday on Friday, the 28th of October. I'm going to be 47. Oh, oh hold on. Sorry about that, I was getting ready for rock, she just came out to talk to me. Um, what's the thing? Yes, it's my birthday on Friday and um, I was talking about that in the other, my last vlog. And one of my lovely viewers who chats to me on Instagram rather than in the YouTube comments got in touch with me and said, it's my birthday on Friday too, whereas I'm 47. This lovely young lady is a lot younger than me and it's a special birthday so I wanted to give her a shout out and say, you go. <laughs> That's him saying happy birthday Stephanie. Just I wanted to say happy birthday Stephanie. I hope you have a fantastic day on Friday. Yay! It's a big one so I hope you really, really enjoy it. What else was I going to say? Yes, a couple of quick reviews. A couple of people have asked me how we're getting on with Sky Glass. We love it really really love it and um, one thing that i will say is you do need a fast internet connection for it but if you've got that it is really good the telly that we've got we got the six what is it 65 inch 67 inch something like that but the picture is so clear is that your head off you can't say hi oh look at that face got to work but you've got the football tonight Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
um, the picture is so clear, the sound quality, I've never had sound like it. Last night we were watching it and I kept saying to Jack, what is that banging? He's like, it's on the telly. The sound is just amazing. Really, really good. So easy to use. We gave my mum and dad the puck, which is like the multi-room, and they can even use it. You basically, it's got a wee microphone button, you hold the button and Hugo say... Move. You don't say Hugo move. <laughs> you say whatever programme you want to watch and it brings it up. It's so easy to use. They've decided they're keeping the puck, so they've gave us the... It was £50 for a new puck, but we've just ordered one and it's 40 So we've ordered another puck and for in our bedroom. And uh, it's honestly, it's fantastic. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah, so Sky Glass is brilliant if you've got fast enough internet. What I will say though is there's some really good deals out there. Just remember that on top of your TV package, you're also paying for the TV. So I think we are £21 a month for the biggest TV on top of the actual television package because it sounds like a great deal until you remember wait a minute you're paying for the tv monthly as well but yeah i would definitely recommend sky glass if you've got the money and you've got the internet the other thing was a lot of people have been asking how we found the iceland food that we showed a couple of vlogs ago um really good the the salt and pepper fish Mm, it was a bit dry for Bassa. I wasn't overly impressed. It was quite dry. And the McCain, was it McCain fries? The barbecue. Wasn't very impressed with them either. I liked the garlic ones, but the barbecue ones were a bit gritty. Wasn't overly impressed. But I did them in the oven, whereas the garlic ones I had done in the air fryer. So maybe that was the difference. I don't know. But the... Um, the hash browns with the beans inside, I really enjoyed them. And the, the loaded chicken breast with the, it had like the tomato sauce and pepperoni and things like that. That was really nice as well. What else did we have? I've had the giant mozzarella sticks. They were really good as well. We went to have the pulled pork yesterday and it says cook from frozen, big letters. And then when you actually go to cook it, for best results, cook from defrost. To defrost, place in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Oh, that's no good, is it? <laughs> How can I do that? So I was a bit annoyed at that. Um, you can cook it from frozen in the microwave for 12 minutes. And I thought, mm, don't fancy that much. Is that dad back? That was quick. It is as well. But Abby and Jack are going to football tonight. So the pumpkin, the frozen heads that I got that I said I'm not sharing I planked them so nobody could get them so when later on tonight I think you need to defrost them for five hours in the fridge here come the puppies hello Molly hello 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 Clyde oh you look at oh did it rain oh did it rain on my boy I need to go and dry them I'll be oh, back in a minute puppies Clyde hates getting wet he absolutely hates it when we got Clyde as a rescue dog at first, the first time we ever saw him zoom in was when he'd been out in the rain. <laughs> he came home and he jumped from one couch to the other, to the other, to the other. We're like, what is he doing? And we realised it was because he was wet, he was zooming and he had the zoomies. He just hates the rain, so Jack didn't get very far on his run. Um, but they're all dried now. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, so later on I'm going to take the pumpkins, I'm going to put them in the free, in the fridge to defrost and then when everyone's away, I'm going to eat them all to myself and I will try them for you because even Brooke's out tonight, she's at Cadets. <laughs> so I will try them for you on camera and let you know what they're like. Anyway, I told you this was going to be a quick vlog. I've now been talking for 21 minutes. <laughs> So I'm going to head off just now and I will let you see all of the, the centrepieces once they are done. Good evening everyone. Yes, it is good evening now. It is 10 to 5 and I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> my beads eventually came at like 4 o'clock or something by which time my head is mince and I'm no longer able to do any crafting as I mentioned in my last vlog. So um, I have had my granny nap and my painkillers, but I'm still just not up to anything. So 
what I'm going to do, I did get on with other stuff for the centrepieces, but I'm going to finish it tomorrow. So I'm going to finish the vlog tomorrow so I can show you the finished article, because I've been going on about it for weeks now. So I'm not going to tease you and say I'm going to show you and then not show you. So, Jack and Abby are away to the football and um, Brooke is getting organised to go to Cadet shortly. So, I did remember to take a certain thing out of the freezer and I'm about to try them. But I thought I would try them on camera for you. See what they're like. Oh, they're actually a decent size. Look at that. Ooh, they are a good size. Maybe I will let her have one after all. They're definitely bigger than I thought they were going to be. Now, all my little plates are in the dishwasher, so I've got a bit of kitchen roll here. So I'm going to cut it in half and let you see what it looks like. You're propped against the toaster just now, so I'll cut it and then I'll, I'll lift it and show you. So for anyone that didn't see that haul, it's from Iceland. Four scarily sweet white chocolate pumpkins. And it's... Um, Filled with salty caramel sauce and Belgian chocolate mousse on the digestive Right. These dogs have been going nuts all day wanting into the garden and every time I've let them into the garden they've been, especially Hugo's, been putting these paws up on the fence between like our garden and Granny Annie's cabin and garden and we're like what is it and then Jack thought the deer had appeared again you know the deer I was talking about that were in our garden yesterday but it turns out it was sheep there was actually sheep in the uh, in granny annie's garden so yes the true country living we had deer in our garden last night and sheep in the garden today oh so that is what it looks like and a lot of the digestive has crumbled onto the oop oop there's the digestive there, can you see it? Right, I'm going to take a bite and then I'm going to pause the camera so you don't see me eating and then I'll come back on. Mm. I'm going to ask Brooke if she wants a bit. There's a bit there that I've just cut off. I cut it, I didn't bite it. Got a little deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some. Right, give it a go. It looks like a dog's puked into it. <laughs> yeah, but don't think about that as you're eating it because it doesn't taste like that. <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> don't think about that. <laughs> no, Clay, that would just make it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking the smallest bite ever. Not like it? It's alright. All right, take a bigger bite. You must have only got a bit of the white chocolate. No? Clyde's like, please. Oh, Clyde's giving her a paw. Is there something we can give them? Did you get a bit of the salty caramel? The salty caramel's really salty. Is there something we can give them? Give them a sausage. You want a sausage? Do <laughs> you want a sausage? <gasps> what I would say is... Here we go. Here we go. Set. <laughs> it's instinct to give a paw now, is it? Eh? No. Oh, tell him fist bump. Fist bump. Yeah. Good boy. Take it nice. Take it nice. Good, Good boy. boy. What I would say is, it is. Well, the uh, cat. Wow. <laughs> First taste that I got straight away was the salty caramel because it's very salty. If you don't like salt, if you don't like salt, I don't think you'll like that. I don't think Jack will like it because it's very salty. So after you, you get that, you get a slight bitterness from the chocolate mousse. It's not dark chocolate, but I think compared to the saltiness of the, the caramel sauce, it's a slight bitterness, but a really smooth consistency of the mousse. Then I got a slight bit of the crumb, but most of the crumb is on the the uh, kitchen roll and then the white chocolate outer casing is really quite thick so it takes a wee while to get through that it's nice but they are scarily sweet and for me saying i'm not sharing them with anyone i don't think i'll be able to eat any more than the one tonight 
So I'll probably, I don't know how long they last actually in the fridge. Once defrosted, consume immediately. Oh, that's kind of backfired on me, hasn't it? Hmm. Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> actually, my mum and dad are in. I'll ask if they want one. That's a good plan. That is a good plan. Um, I'll have another one and I'll give one to my mum and dad. Oh, because the leaves are falling off the trees, it's a lot easier for them to see the squirrels. And that's what I've been getting all day. It's like, squirrel! Squirrel! <laughs> anyway, right, I'm going to go to my bed now. Yes, I know it's five o'clock, but that's just the height. The high flying life that I've got just now. I'm not going to end the vlog just now. I will come back to you in the morning once I have finished, hopefully completely finished, the centerpieces and I will show you them then. And then I'll end the vlog. <laughs> Night night everyone. Looking good, soldier. Hi. Okay, okay. Morning, it's now Wednesday and I'm pretty much finished my centerpieces, so I'll show you them in a second. Just got a couple of things to show you, I don't know where he's put it, hold on. When Jack was at the football last night, he met up with his dad who brought this. Oh, look at that! He's had it for a while, but he's moving house and uh, he's not got anywhere to put it, so he's brought that as a framed, signed Lisbon Lions Celtic shirt. I'll show you it properly once it's up somewhere, but I couldn't believe it when you walked in with that. Yay! Abby also got her um, photo taken with Welsh last night. We met him as they were going in because he's injured. I'll pop that on the screen for you. And the other thing that happened last night is our Skype up came. Yay! So I'm just going to get that all set up just now as well. It only took a day, but just fab. So his mum and dad have still got the other one in the cabin, so we'll just get this one set up. And then we'll have Sky in our bedroom. Woohoo! So I'll get this set up and then I'll show you the centerpieces. Right, that's us got Sky in our room. Yay! And I finished. Yay! Pretty much. I'll explain in a minute. Let me just show you quickly the little decorations I've been doing. So I added some little drills from the spare drills from the diamond art. This is why I never throw them away. So we've got little Santa sleighs with some little stars. I'm just going to show you briefly. I know this has been a long video. We've got little gifts with some little sparkles on them. Now they're just plain wood on the back so that they can use them either as a tree decoration or as a gift tag. They can just write to and from on the back. The cheeky snowman and the nose has got little sparkle on it. <laughs> The other snowmen, the eyes got sparkle and the nose. Like I say, I'm just going through them really quickly. I've got a few different types of Christmas tree. There's one. It's got a little bow on the top. And it's green background with the gold tree. Sorry if it's not shown up very well. Got candy canes and the red bit's got sparkle on it. <laughs> I quite like these. The wee elf bodies and the buttons are 3D. Got little Santa bodies and his belt's got little 3D buttons on it. Other Christmas trees. Got red with the green. And then the gold again. Other Christmas trees again, silver with green. <laughs> Green with silver. Again, I just randomly put the, the little bubbles on the trees. What have I not showed you? Different Santa Claus. Eh, different sleighs. This is sleighs with Santa in it. I've got some with little stars, so it looks like he's flying through the sky. Little bells. And here's the ones that cost all the hassle. I've not got the wee hangy bits in them yet. But look at Rudolph! <laughs> so he's got antlers and he's got beads for his eyes and his nose. And they're all, because they're handmade, they all look slightly different. 
and some of them are a wee bit squint, but that's the beauty of handmade things, isn't it? You're never going to get them perfect. Yay! Oh, he has got a nose. And I'm not very good with a glue gun yet, so they're all okay. So there's 65 of them in total, that's why it took me so long. And I will show you now the centerpieces. show you the centerpieces. Apologies for the washing machine and tumble dryer, we're in the kitchen. Jack still got one of the wooden thing, wooden bits to make because the original was a different piece of wood and it looks too different from the rest so he's going to make another bit out of the same piece of wood that the other six are made from, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to turn you around and let you see them. So here they are. So it's like Yule logs and um, obviously it has to be the artificial tea lights. The, they're multicoloured, so they, they burn, they burn, <laughs> they should, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the light changes colour. Anyway, I've not put them all on, but the snow globe in the middle has got a light, a, a candle in it as well. So, let me show you. This one here has got little trees and Merry Christmas, it's got artificial snow in it. They've all got holly on them, but Granny Annie, when she's out and about this weekend, is going to get little artificial berries and we're going to glue the berries on where the staples are and then we're going to put artificial snow over them and that will be them completely finished. So that just says Merry Christmas. That one there is a little dog walker walking through the snow and the trees. That one there says Welcome and it's little trees. There's a snowman, <laughs> he's cheeky, I like him. That one says North Pole this way and it's got a little gift at the bottom. We've got carol singers beside a tree. They've all got little Christmas washi tape around the lid. Remember these were all yogurt jars from Aldi. And this is going to go in the other log. Ow! <laughs> I just pricked my finger on the holly. Um, this is going to go in the other log once it's made, it's another snowman, but this snowman has got, you can't see where the snow has got little trees behind them. Um, and like I say, these will all be switched on and they change colour as well. Um, it's hard to see in this light, which is why I didn't bother switching them all on. The lights in the jars are stuck on with Velcro so you can take it off to switch it on and off. So that is what I have been very busy doing <laughs> and that's why it's taken so long. So they're all going to get berries on them and they're all going to get artificial snow on them. Seven tables and 65 guests um, catered for. <laughs> so the centrepiece is going to go in the middle of all the tables and then the little decorations are going to go on uh, there's a bottle of wine, hold on I'll show you. Granny Annie has bought a bottle of wine for each of them and she's bought some bottle covers. I think there's three different patterns on them. She just bought them, I've not made them because there was no way I had time to do anything like that. And each bottle of wine is going to get one of the little decorations on it as well, which they can take home and like I said earlier, they can use it as a tree decoration or they can use it as a gift tag or they can chuck it in the bin, whatever they want to do with it. So that is what she's done this year. So they're not personalised as such, but they're all getting a little gift to take home with them. And I'm actually glad that I've made these wee decorations because it means now I know what I'm doing with them. Now that I know how to do them, I'll be able to do them quite quickly. So next year, hopefully, I'll have a stall and I'll be able to make loads of them to sell. And sell them for like 50 pence each or something because... They don't take an awful lot. They take time more than money, to be honest. But like I say, now that I know what I'm doing with them, they'll be easy peasy. So I do apologise if this has been a very long vlog. I did say at the start that I was hoping it would be a quick one, but I don't think it has been. But these are now done. I can move on to other things. Tracy's order is finally finished, so I'm going to hopefully get that packed up today. And I'll tell you what. See now that this order is done, not the order that my mum's table stuff is done, if I was able to get up out of this wheelchair I would be dancing a jig for the rest of the day because it's been like a shadow over me for weeks. Don't get me wrong, I do not mind doing it for Granny Annie because she does so much for me and the kids and Jack but it's just that way that I've got so much to do and it's been weighing on my mind for so long but 
now that I've done it, I can get on with everything else. So I'm going to head off now. Like I say, I'm sorry if it's been a long one, but I wanted to get you up to scratch, uh, up to date with everything that's done. I wanted to make sure that you saw them now. I can move on to other things and I'm just repeating myself. I'm havering, so I'm going to go. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to me in the comments below and I'll see you in our next one. Thanks everyone. Oh, happy birthday again, Stephanie. Bye. Thank you.